Fantastic and a warm welcome to Why in the Morning. You're still watching hashtag Why in the Morning right here with me, Brian Sakwa. And still remember, you can still chime in using our hashtag, which is Why in the Morning. And uh, we had asked you a question a little bit earlier on. Before that, we, we asked how much do you spend in a day and on what exactly. Keep your feedback coming, by the way. We'll be reading your feedback at the tail end of this broadcast at Y254. Channel is our social media platform. Remember on Instagram, there's an underscore. And mine's is at Brian Sakwa 101. Now on our segment, Entrepreneurship Tuesday today, we are talking about car dealership. How do you venture into it? And if you if you are planning maybe to buy a car out there, what are some of the policies the government has put in place that regulate the industry? And maybe if you want to maybe partner with someone who is in the space, we've got you right about now. And uh, joining me right now on set is a guy you'll you'll be interested to know as the show goes on he goes by the name Caliph Cairo and uh, good morning to you bro thank you so much for joining us today uh, thank you I'm privileged to be on this show yeah it's a blessing and uh, I'd just like you to introduce yourself and maybe uh, tell us what you do be because uh, I understand you're in the car dealership business and it's such an interesting field and it's massive as well my name is uh, Khalif Cairo. I'm, uh, I'm the co-founder of uh, Imports by Cairo, which is a leading luxury car dealership in Kenya. And um, essentially what we do is we help people uh, buy and uh, sell luxury cars. Uh, and that also entails uh, importation yeah. and uh, maintenance, after-sales support, that yeah. kind of stuff. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting you spoke of importation because it's, it's like one of the major parts in that business because yeah. uh, half of the cars actually we have in, in our country yeah. are from overseas. Yes. And uh, just in case somebody who is watching this show right now and uh, they want to venture into that business, like how do they go about and where do they start? Uh, well, um, I normally advise people, before you go into any business, you need to, under, you need to have a passion for that particular field. Because okay. uh, passion is what keeps you going when your business is not making money. Yeah. And you know, entrepreneurship, if you ask me, it's a, it's a journey of sorts. And yeah. uh, at times, things are not typically well cut. Yeah. So first of all, you need, you, need, you, need, you need to have a passion for vehicles. You need to actually enjoy doing the job. And um, I, I normally tell people, money should not be your primary concern initially. Yeah. You should first do it as a hobby or for fun. And then once you feel like, um, I, I understand this industry very well, then you can now go to the serious aspect of it, which yeah. includes uh, understanding your target market, knowing what products you can, you're able to push, yeah. and basically just trying now to make money. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. You mentioned the aspect of money, and uh, before we come back to money, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll basically love to know how you ventured into car dealership, how you got started, where did you start, how is the journey, which year did you begin to venture into that business as well? Um, I started off at when, when I was 18. Okay. I've been dealing cars since I was 18. Right after I finished my high school, I happened to get a job at, at a showroom in, uh, in Lavington. Actually, Tamak, and just <laughs> yeah. I knew I wanted to sell cars. Yeah. Always had a passion, passion for, for, cars. for cars. Yeah. Uh. So these guys actually gave me a job. Surprisingly, everybody was shocked. And then um, the, the showroom was called uh, Ocean Cross Autos. So I worked yeah, for yeah. those guys for like Where for was like it two. Best? That was in uh, Valley Arcade. Yeah, yeah. Just right next to the Kenya Human Rights Commission, opposite. Okay. Yeah. So I I started off there, learned the trade, uh, built some some networks. And I, and after some time, uh, I left. I left uh, Ocean Cross, and I went freelance. Yeah. And then fast forward some, uh, how many years are those? Some five years later, I partnered up with a friend, and we we founded Imports Bekero. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, and I, I want us to come back to money because uh, when you mentioned that uh, you begin with first of all passion and hobby, yeah. but later on things started opening up and yes, yes. You've, your business is now like one of the biggest in, in, in the car dealership industry. Yeah. Uh, what, wh wh where did all that come from? Because I believe you, you, you said you, you were employed first yeah, yeah, as, a, yeah. as an attendant, yes. right? Yeah. Yeah. How did that happen? Um, okay, uh, first of all, as, a, as I've mentioned, uh, uh, you you really need to be disciplined in anything you're doing because I normally tell guys if you want to go into big business even the richest guys on earth they have to get financed someone has to finance you you need to get an investor or a partner who has who has the financial muscle and in most cases what determines whether you get investors or uh, or even a bank loan is how disciplined are you can you be trusted with money can people work with you 
you know those are those are those, those are some of the aspects yeah. and then for me I, I i also credit god for playing a very huge role in my life you yeah. know just keeping me in line keeping me in check yeah. ensuring that we play by the rules yeah just be a good boy yeah. and then uh, things tend to open up by the way yeah and uh, once you're passionate uh, and you understand a certain field very well there's so many people there's so many firms that will want to invest in you as a young person yeah. you, just, you just need to get your staff right yeah yeah I understand you have quite a number of staff at your place yeah. and uh, what is the criteria maybe you use uh, to select them professionally to come to to come on board to work uh, at your car dealership company well our company does not have uh, in terms of ac ac academic studies we don't have a clear cut um, standard that I'd say that maybe you need to have a certain degree in a certain field what we look for um, because I'm not in charge of the hiring process. We have a whole team. It's a, it's a, it's a whole company. There's another director and uh, there's, there's a department that normally handles the hiring. But if you're getting hired at Imports Bekero, we are probably looking at um, how passionate are you and how knowledgeable are you with cars. Okay. There are things you can't really quantify. And um, even, even the confidence. Because, you know, if you're selling luxury cars, uh, it's all about personal selling. You need to be able to convince a client to part with their hard hand money yeah. on, a, on an expensive car. So we look at um, how good is a candidate's uh, presentation skills, how, how well versed are you with, the ve with, with vehicles. And if you're not versed with vehicles, because some, even the guys I work with, some of them are not well versed with vehicles, how passionate are you about learning? Yeah. Yeah. Do, so, you, do you have that extra drive, you know? Yeah. yeah. So you come as an open canvas, and yeah. it, it, that possibly means that you can take uh, the person through a learning process. Yes, and yes, can yes. learn about yeah. your business. Yeah. And yeah. Cast, you have a website where maybe yes. people can read about it as uh, we continue the conversation. Yes, uh, you can head over to importsbekairo.com. Okay. Yeah, you can check out our website. We normally list all the cars over there. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Interesting. And then let's talk about money. Um, do you feel as an entrepreneur, as a car dealer, that you must have a good, uh, and, and we had mentioned that earlier, how, how much are you trustable even with the smallest that you've yeah. been given? Yeah. How is your relationship with money? Is money attracted to you? Do you attract money? Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's quite an interesting question. Yeah. I, I think we have a good relationship with money. Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, <laughs> well, uh, it, it all depends on how you present yourself. Okay. If you, I'm a, I'm, I'm, I'm a firm believer that if you struggle to look for money, you'll never find it. Uh -huh. yeah. Please explain. <laughs> Please explain. <laughs> Just do your thing. That's what I tell people. Uh -huh. Just do your thing. Yeah. Be good at whatever you're doing. Yeah. Let money not be the primary objective. Uh -huh. You know, money comes and goes. There are guys sure. who make money. There are guys who score billions in a lottery. Yeah. But five years down the line, the guy is broke or something. Yeah. Yeah. But um, if, you, if you're guided by, by passion, you're guided by discipline, and you have an objective that is not money, yeah. but the money just finds you. Because yeah. you'll become so good at your craft that people will pay huge money just yeah. to... To just be a part of yeah, it. Yeah, just, just, just to be a part of your brand. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. But that doesn't come if you put emphasis on the money. Yeah. You, you just need to first work on yourself, work on your brand. I, I still don't believe I'm at the money level I'd, I'd want to be. Yeah. But you see, uh, my focus at the moment is not getting the money. The money yeah. It's just becoming the best in the country or okay. the best in Africa or maybe the best in the world. And yeah. then after that, once you solve a few problems in the industry, the money just rolls in automatically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. absolutely interesting. Yeah. And we can't have this conversation without talking about the pandemic, the COVID-19 pandemic. Yes. Uh, I'm interested to know what happened when the pandemic struck. Like, just take us through that experience of how it shaped your company and even personally yourself as an individual and no, how okay. it is right now. Um, I'd say we are almost heading to the post-pandemic. We are almost yeah. in the recovery period. Yes. Yeah, so please take us through that experience. Uh, actually, we, we've, we started our office. We actually founded Imports in 2017, mm -hmm. but we never had an office. We used to mostly operate on a Facebook page. It was very funny those days. But yeah. we, we, we finally got an address. We, we actually set up the company properly, formally, with all the documentation and an address in uh, 2020, January. Yeah. And then um, once we'd uh, paid the deposits for the office, the pandemic came. For me, I'd say the pandemic was a blessing in disguise. Wow. Yeah. How? How? Because How um, because a lot of people are affected. Businesses shut down. Yeah. Employees, employers sent employees home. They cut down on the number of staff. Yes. There was the issue of pay cuts. 
please how is it a blessing to you because it's interesting right uh, because it helped us to think outside the box wow okay at, at that particular moment you remember the country was shut down and yeah. we the industry the car industry guys had to think about how we were going to do our marketing because uh, before then we really had to rely on uh, in-store purchases where a guy, a guy has to see your showroom by the road and then walks in comes and selects a car but you see now the pandemic changed that guys couldn't move and we had to go heavy on uh, on instagram personally i i started spending more time learning how to make reels learning how to post content on instagram mm -hmm. and i i believe uh, it's partly the, the pandemic is one of the reasons why we have such a good presence online because yeah. we had to think outside the box to get yeah. clients so there's that shift like, yes the, the, from yeah. traditional way yeah. of doing your things in your yes. company to yes. the digital yeah but uh on the flip side because also there's also the, the negative aspect of the pandemic yeah. shipping costs have, have gone up which is uh, which is putting a, a lot of pressure on car dealers in kenya in the world and then we also experience in uh, a brand new car shortage globally which is pushing prices of the used cars up because yeah. if guys can't get brand new cars they never they'll never replace the cars they're driving yeah. which means we get limited uh, vehicles in the market yeah so there's also there's the issue of in inflation Inflation, yeah. yeah, as the as the economies uh, start to resurge, remember government spent a lot of money during the pandemic, the pandemic on welfare. Yeah. So there's too much money in circulation, which causes inflation. And then um, there's the shipping crisis that's currently going on. Yeah. And then there's the vehicle shortage. But yeah. on on the good side, we learned how to make content, which is a good yeah. thing. Yeah. Which is a good thing yeah. because everybody everybody right now wants to at least uh, see something on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. TikTok. And and I love the fact that you're also using TikTok and YouTube. Yeah, YouTube is yeah. massively picking up and uh, yeah. whatnot. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, yes, yes. Interesting. Uh, and, and also talk about how uh, the crisis part, uh, you mentioned uh, inflation and the yes. resurging in the economy. Yes. How has that uh, affected also your business in terms of even importation of some of the, of the machines that you've got at your yard? Uh, well, uh, currently the dollar is uh, trading at around, uh, on paper, if you ask the central bank, they'll tell you 118. But in real sense, if you come to the ground, guys are even quoting as high as 122, 123. Yeah. Take yeah. note, uh, before the pandemic, the dollar used to exchange at around 100, 100 shillings. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's quite a marginal increase. Yeah. And it's, it's the fact that there's uh, so much pressure on the shilling, yeah. and not just the shilling, even other currencies around the world, yeah. um, it makes it harder to purchase the cars. Because you see, the cars are bought in dollars. When we are transacting, let's say with a dealer in Singapore, we tend to transact even they don't even prefer their local currency, local currency yeah. they prefer transacting with the dollar is there so, is there a reason as to why maybe they prefer the dollar mm, well you know that the dollar is king everywhere i think I've, I've, I've never really understood why even in japan they they don't prefer the and they'll insist on you paying with the, the dollar, dollar yeah. yeah so i've never i've never really thought about why they insist on that but i think probably people find the dollar to be a more stable currency yeah and well backed so yeah. the fact that the dollar is very expensive means that the prices of cars have really gone up. Gone up. Yeah, yeah. really, really, really shot up. Yeah. Yeah. And speaking of that, uh, there's a there's a way. Uh, I think it could be last year, or maybe, but one. Uh, the president issued a ban on importation of even second-hand cars, or those mm. those are those are law that was implemented and, and it kind of shook uh, your industry. Yes. How did that go, and how did you survive? And how was the experience from your side as well? Uh, yeah, yeah, it was around 2018 or 2019. Yeah. I think that's, in, in my opinion, if you ask me, the regime has done an excellent job on roads and whatnot. Yeah. But I think uh, trying to ban used cars in Kenya has to be my lowest point of this, part, of this part particular government. I mean, for, for once I felt like uh, we had uh, people making policies and they didn't understand what, uh, what the market really wanted. So at that, at that particular point, um, I almost felt like giving up, honestly. Yeah. I was almost uh, deciding, you know, maybe I should switch to doing something else. But um, after a bit of pressure, I think they decided to reconsider. Uh, the CS was Munya at the time. Yes, and, uh, yeah. yes, yes, Munya. Well, yes, Munya. Yes, yes, Munya. Yeah. And then they, they did, the, we, we had to compromise. So recently, if you check the news, KEDS has banned the importation of some, of some prime movers and some trucks. Yeah. So th those were some of the compromises we 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 had to we had to come to with the government. Because yeah. you see, uh, even in the most advanced of countries, even countries like uh, like Dubai, countries like the US, yeah. even the UK, even Singapore, where yeah, you even said, Singapore, yeah. you 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 can still import a used car. Yeah. You see, you you can't force people to buy new cars. 
Yeah. It is it is the pocket of people that forces them to buy uh, the vehicle they want. Yeah. You, I can't pass a law if I was the president and tell guys, look, everybody should buy a Mercedes tomorrow. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. Sure. It goes against the concept of a, of, a, of, a, of a free economy. The least the government can do is, is, is actually empower us. Because used car dealers pay a lot of taxes in this country. We employ a lot of people. Yeah. So when, when, when then the government tries to fight you, it's yeah. very demoralizing to any young person. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. And, 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 and how do you import cars, as, as, yeah. especially maybe for a person who's watching back at home yeah. and uh, they want to just know if I want to maybe even partner with Ka Caliph Cairo, Imports yeah. by Cairo, the yeah. name of your business, okay. how do I start to like uh, go down in that direction? Yeah. Maybe even in terms of the legal aspect of it. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, well, uh, first of all, you need, you need to have the right contacts on the other side. And then um, it depends. You see, there are, cars, there are cars that are easier to import. Like, for instance, the smaller vehicles, they're pretty straightforward. You know, just buy, uh, uh, get the invoice, send the payment outside, and uh, wait for the car to be shipped, uh, get to Mombasa, yeah. pick your car. It's, very, it's quite straightforward. But with, um, but with, uh, with, with high-end cars, there's more work involved. Because yeah. uh, if you're dealing with, a, uh, with an expensive asset, more checks need to be done. You need to be more careful. You need to know who you're buying from. Because some, some of these cars have very expensive repairs. Yeah. So the advantage with dealing with imports by Cairo is we have a presence in all the major exporting countries. Yeah. We have people in Japan. We have, uh, we have people in, uh, in Singapore. Yeah. We have a partnership with one of the leading uh, dealerships in the UK. Yeah. So the fact that we have, a, we have such an extensive global network means that if you deal with us, Chances are, or 99% chances are, you'll get the, a, a very good car. And in the event that a vehicle is shipped with a defect, we normally cover the cost of the repairs. Yeah. So the, the process is just come to our office, yeah. give us your specifications, we will give you a quote, yeah. uh, pay a deposit, which is uh, typically 60% of the buying price, of the total landing cost of the vehicle, including taxes. We yeah. start the process, the vehicle gets to Mombasa, yeah. we pay the taxes, and uh, we hand over the vehicle to you. Wow. Yeah. Which is uh, amazing. Yeah. And uh, I think on that note, uh, we are just about to take a short break. But when we come back, he'll be telling us what are some of the latest trends and even in technology and in an advancement, even in the gearboxing of the cars, the body chassis. If you're back at home and maybe you want to buy a Porsche or you want to buy an Audi, he's going to be telling us that. And even some of the cars in his yard. So stick around for that. Remember, hashtag is still why in the morning. At Brian Sako 101 is my handle on social media platforms, your handle? Uh, at Imports by Cairo. All right, when we come back, we're going to be delving into that. Stick around. And welcome back. Once again, you're still watching Why in the Morning right here on Y254 channel. And still on the conversation today on Entrepreneurship Tuesday, we are talking about car dealership, literally the automobile industry and whatnot. And as we had said earlier on, I just want us to actually understand and know if just in case you want to buy a first class car or like they call it first class concierge cars how much do you need to have to maybe get yourself a car from imports by car and maybe what are some of the latest cars in his yard and uh, thank you so much for sticking around so uh please uh just tell us what is the cheapest car in your yard <laughs> you, like uh just uh, at imports by Cairo. Yeah. how much does it cost and maybe what mm. model and brand. And also tell us the most expensive brand that you've got. Mm, we, uh, the, the cheapest, what's the cheapest? We actually had a BMW that was going for 800, uh, a 320i, E90 BMW. model. BMW? Yeah, you know, you know the thing with luxury cars is um, they don't really command much resale value, which is a good thing mm. to any person who's, uh, who's interested in, in getting a used uh, luxury car. Key thing is just to ensure that you have the support and um, you know you're buying from a trusted uh, dealer. Yeah, we there's a there's a there's a three twenty that's going for around eight hundred, which is a good deal yeah. for a luxury car, and it's in it's still in good condition. Yeah, wow. uh, the most expensive uh, we had a twenty twenty Range Rover uh, SVR Carbon. It was going for thirty five million Kenya shillings. It's still there. <laughs> you still have it? <laughs> no, no, it's already been sold. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which which are the latest brand from? Uh, um, you've mentioned Range Rover. You've mentioned BMW. The, we also stock in a 2020 Porsche Cayenne. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 2020 Porsche Cayenne. We have a 2016, 2017 Range Rover Sport. 
Um, we have three Mercedes uh, S class, uh, 20, 2016, yeah. And we, on, we also have the only BMW 435i Grand Coupe in Kenya. Yeah, so we, imports actually stocks, we, we have an affinity to stock in rare cars. Yeah. yeah. Cars that you can't find just anywhere else. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Interesting. And we can't, we can't do this without talking about even the advancement. You've talked of the 2020 Porsche. Is it the Porsche car? Yeah, yeah. This, yeah, yeah. Porsche, Porsche Just talk a, talk a little bit about the, the gearboxing and even the adaptability on the road. What are yeah. some of the advantages of even having uh, a Porsche car and on some of these roads uh, of ours? Well, you know, there's, there's a, there's a mis misconception that uh, most of these cars can't handle Kenyan roads. Actually, they can. They're well, German cars are well engineered. It, any European cars, those guys know how to make their cars. It's only that at times they require they require good make, they just require good maintenance. But it does not mean that they cannot handle bad roads. They are actually very good at handling uh, all the bad roads. Some of the technological advance, ad, advancement uh, we are seeing is the fact that cars are becoming more like phones. Uh, if if you if you go into a 2020 car, you notice a lot of touch screens. You notice a lot of uh, user friendly software interfaces. You'll also notice that some can drive themselves and they adapt to your phone very well. Uh, there are technologies like the, like, uh, it's called the Apple CarPlay, the Android Auto, that make it quite easy to, to, to sync your phone uh, with yeah. a vehicle. Yeah. And even so, navigate through driving. Yeah, yeah. navigate. You, you're able to access your emails from the vehicle's uh, infotainment system. And um, what else have we seen? A lot of manufacturers are also switching to electric cars. So as we, as we go on, uh, probably in the next 10 years, very few manufacturers will be making uh, petrol cars or diesel cars. Yeah. Yeah, the world is going electric. That's the major trend right now. If you look at the most expensive uh, car, uh, car manufacturing brands in the world right now, you'll find companies like uh, Tesla, yeah. which didn't, didn't even exist 25 years ago. But now with the advent of uh, ele electronic cars, they're some of the most expensive brands on earth. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, I understand also you are, I was just scanning through your social media yeah. and uh, I've seen you fly a lot. Uh, yeah. You're into aviation? Yeah, I, yeah. Uh, flying flying is, one of, is one of my other passions. Okay. I, I, pro, I tell guys if I, ha, if, I, if I didn't end up as a, <laughs> as a car dealer, maybe I'd be flying commercially. Yeah, yeah that would have been the other, the other thing I'd have done. Yeah. Mm, it, it's always been my passion yeah. since I was a very, very small boy. Yeah. yeah. Mm. There's usually that fear that when you're up there, yeah. you, you don't know what's happening down here. And uh, let's just talk <laughs> about how that experience is. You're flying through the, the, the craziest terrain and maybe yeah. how did you uh, survive uh, one of the craziest terrain up there in the skies? Because, you know, kids kids would be mad that kuna kabarabara kuna mtu anendesha tu ndege kabarabara na kuna traffic. Please just paint for us uh, a picture well, of just, how that is. Okay, uh, well, just, just to keep it simple. Okay. Um, there, there are two ways of flying. You can either fly visual or you can fly instruments. If you're flying visual, you're using, uh, you're using visual cues to navigate. So if you were to fly visual to, let's say, Mombasa, I'd probably follow the SGR. That's a visual cue. If I follow it, I know it takes me to Mombasa. Yeah. Again, there's, uh, there's, and then there's the flying for the big boys, the, the pure in instrument flying, yeah. where you can't see outside. You're just relying on your electronic instruments. You're just looking at your GPS. You're looking at your at your radio navigation instruments, so it's actually I find I find flying to be quite thrilling, to say the least. Yeah. Yeah. I, and I I don't remember the the a time that I got scared. I only remember one time when we had a small mishap, uh, sort of like an engine failure during training. But it was just it was uh, it wasn't something major. That's the only time I got scared. But all the other times I find it thrilling. <coughs> So yeah. interesting. Yeah. And uh, also talk about uh, some of the policies the government has put in place to ensure that, you know, importation of cars yeah. is uh, flowing well, especially for secondhand cars yeah. in relationship to uh, the, 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 the legal ban that had been is previously issued to that. Yeah. Do, uh, have, have there been any changes so far that you say you'd say they've made progress and things are now? Uh, yes. Flowing? Um, I think one of the one of the most uh, interesting things that that happened in the industry in the past two years was the was the introduction uh, was actually not even the intro was the introduction and the revocation of the licensing for some two inspection companies that uh, that had been contracted by cabs under uh, unclear circumstances. Yeah. As an industry player, I found that to be quite a step in the right direction because we had already started seeing uh, complaints from uh, from dealers 
from end users, you know, saying uh, uh, these companies are letting through cars that are not clean. So when, when uh, the government, through cabs, revoked the appointment of those inspecting firms, I saw it as a step in the right direction. Because the whole point, um, I, I belong to a school of thought that um, much as we're importing these cars, they need to meet a certain standard. Yeah. Kenya cannot become a dumping ground for, <coughs> for dirty used cars. Yeah. Even if you're going to be importing used cars, they need to be at the highest standard. The highest standard I think the only yeah. thing the government can do is just make it easier and cheaper yeah. uh, to import new cars. Because yeah. the current tax regime in Kenya tends to punish people who bring new cars. New cars, yeah. Yeah, because the limit is eight years. But a guy, a guy, a guy bringing a one-year-old car and a guy bringing an eight-year-old car not paying the same taxes. Yeah. You'd expect the guy bringing an eight-year-old car to pay uh, higher taxes. Yeah. But in Kenya, it's the reverse. The reverse, So, yeah. yeah. So it's it's majorly massively affecting that. Yes, yes, yes. It it, it actually it actually affects the industry because uh, most people will tend to bring the older cars, the eight year old cars, because yeah. you know you have to stay in business. Yeah. But if 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 the law was reversed and uh, and they allowed people to bring newer cars, yeah, we would have better emission standards in Kenya, yeah. and we'll also have newer cars on the roads. Yeah. So I think that uh, whoever the next regime, because I I do understand the elections are. Probably two weeks away. Yeah, two weeks ago. Yeah, so mm. the next uh, regime that is going to come into power needs to look at that and maybe just change that tax law. Yeah. Yeah. True. And I hope they'll adhere to that. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm being informed that I have to wrap it up. Yeah. But uh, before before we wrap it up, uh, Madam Producer and Director, yeah. there was a time uh, the Kabi or Jesus partnered with you and <laughs> yeah. they bought an Audi. Yes, it was yes, posted yes. on a billboard. And yeah. later on, did they return the Audi as in? What was the drama? Because no. it, it literally <laughs> caught people's attention. No, actually, no, actually, actually, get this quite a lot. Yeah. The truth of the matter is, Kabi actually bought the car. Oh, Kabi bought yeah, the car. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, uh, it was actually a, a, a gift for me. A Millie. gift for the wife. Me, for yeah, yeah. Uh, it was a gift from Mili to Kabi. To Kabi. So what, yeah. what actually happened was they bought an Audi A5, which has very low ground ground clearance. And then at, at that point, uh, if you follow the, the cabbies, they were living in uh, Tindigua, yeah. which has, uh, the roads are not very good. So we advised them to just top up. After, after, after she presented the gift, we advised them to top up uh, a million. Was it? It was something close to a million. Okay. And then get the Q5. Yeah. The A5 and the Q5 actually share, they actually share a platform. Yeah. So we just advised them to get the Q5. Yeah. They topped up the money. Which they did. Which they actually did. And okay. uh, Kabi drives around, has been driving a Q5 for the last two years. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, but of course, guys, you know, people will hate online. Yeah. Say we did it for clout. But yeah. if it the people who follow Kabi, yeah. Kabi is still driving the Q5 to this day. Yeah. So it wasn't clout. It's not yep. cloud chasing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now you've heard it from the horse's mouth, and I think yeah. we'll end it right there. Just yeah. kindly where people can find you, maybe the social media and the number for your business and yourself. Yes, uh, the business profile uh, is uh, Imports by Cairo at, uh, on all social media platforms. That's uh, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook, TikTok. And then um, if you want to follow me personally, my name is Calif Cairo on all the social media platforms. You right. can shoot your DM, yeah. All right, a number? Um, company number for imports by Cairo is uh, 0737665566. All righty. Yeah. And, and thank you so much, bro, for coming yeah. and uh, respecting the time to be with us. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah, you're welcome. Uh, thank you. You guys are going to host me again. Definitely will. <laughs> Maybe you should try our sister station too, if it's possible, right? No problem. Okay. And uh, thank you so much, guys. This has been a great conversation about the automobile industry and car, uh, car dealership. Just in case you had questions, uh, he has left his social media platforms and even the numbers. Just in case. Maybe you want to buy a car. God has blessed you. Please reach out. In that but regard, we are taking a very short break. We are coming back with much more, including my co-host, Stephanie Ayeta. So stay around on hashtag Why in the Morning. <laughs>